Um, this seems to be a bit of a theme developing here. Um, the government doesn't seem to think that the rules apply to everyone else that apply to them. First, we had the Prime Minister's chief advisor flouting the lockdown rules he himself, he, that he himself crea helped to create. And now we have the Secretary of State for Housing seemingly decide that planning regulations are flexible, as long as it's your friend, Askin, and he's got a spare £12,000. I do welcome the fact that we're having this debate because, as they say, and as we've heard, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Accountability should be at the heart of this place, but sadly, it's often lacking. With this in mind, I think it was a shame that the Right Honourable Member for Newark refused to submit himself to parliamentary scrutiny at the other week. Whether a government has a majority of eight or it's a shame that you didn't present yourself for scrutiny the other week when it was an issue, the issue was raised. Whether the government has a majority of eight or 80, the same scrutiny should apply. To me, and in the minds of many of my constituents, it'll be quite clear what has happened here. Two influential figures in the Conservative Party have gone out of their way to approve a development project headed by a Conservative Party donor which blatantly broke regulation and was strongly opposed by the local authority. Following this, the same developer made a £12,000 cash donation to the Conservative Party before the Secretary of State admitted an apparent bias and that he knew he was saving the developer millions. Whatever else you call this, it's clearly morally wrong. But the legalities are one thing. This is also about local democracy. And I want to talk about who the Secretary of State was really shortchanging, the people of Tower Hamlets. As someone who has served as a councillor for 14 years and who knows the hard work that the desperately underfunded County Council does in Durham, I also know the importance of that money to local authorities. And I also know the importance and value of social housing. I'll give way. I'm very, very grateful to my honourable friend for giving way. I've been trying for a very long time. Um, <laughs> do, does she agree with me that what is, um, I think, quite shocking about what we've heard today is that the Secretary of State did watch the promotional video on the night uh, of the Conservative fundraiser and the rules on Secretary of State decision-making on planning state privately made representation should not be entertained unless other part parties have been given the chance to consider them and comment. And it's clear from what we've heard so far that that hasn't happened um, and, and, and we need answers on that exact point from Secretary of State. Okay, thank you for that. And I, I, I totally agree. Um, Mr. Madam Deputy Speaker, the fact that the Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government knowingly made a decision which reduced affordable housing and deprived a local council and its communities of much needed funding is a disgrace, quite frankly. And it's deeply worrying, if not, and it's deeply worrying, uh, if not surprising, that the Secretary of State appeared more concerned with the interests of the wealthy property developers rather than the Tower Hamlets community. As a Member of Parliament, we serve the public, not the powerful. At least we do on this side of the House. Madam Deputy Speaker, this isn't just about leadership. It's about honesty, integrity and transparency. The public must be able to trust the government that they're making decisions in the people's interest, not in their own personal interests or that of their wealthy friends. To be honest, I think it's going to be difficult for the Secretary of State to regain the trust of the public. He has promised to immediately publish all documentation which, and, cons and correspondence that relate to this case, which really should have already happened. And I hope that this clears up why he decided to overrule his own inspectors and also provides the justification why, despite having a bias, by his own admission, he actively brought the decision into his own control. I'm finished now. The Secretary of State still has <laughs> serious questions to answer, and I hope that we get the answers, because the vote in public deserve better than this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.